Hey guys, it's Bad Snacks here. Today I have something a little bit different for you. It is a highlight reel of the No Justice No Beats stream that we did on Twitch, co-hosted by my friend Noah Fex from Beats Freaks and Geeks in Los Angeles and featuring producers Killer Man Zigo, Caption, More Kismet, and Jovan Landry. Um, it is a sample flip challenge where we all contributed one shots to a folder and the challenge was that we had to use at least one one shot from each producer in order to make a track. And then on top of that, it was also a space for us to have some really deep discussion and um, a huge shout out to everybody who was involved, huge shout out to everybody who tuned in and helped us raise over a thousand dollars in one night for national bailout. Um, all of the tracks from this special uh, are going to be on Bandcamp at nojusticenobeats.bandcamp.com. It'll be available on July 3rd, and the proceeds are going to National Bailout as well as to the artists that participated. Um, at this point, I already know that there's a lot of people who follow my page, um, a lot of people who support the movement. There's also a lot of people who don't. For me, this is a really important issue. It's a human rights issue, and it's something that affects people that I love, and it affects people that you guys listen to. If you follow my page, chances are you probably consume black music because electronic music and hip hop obviously. No hate comments of any kind are going to be tolerated on this page. I do like to encourage discussion because uh, I think there's always a place to learn um, and we are leading with education and we're leading with love. Just telling it like it is. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for being here. Yo, welcome everybody to No Justice, No Beats and I'm very honored to be here. I go by the name of No Effects. Uh, you may know me, you may not. I'm the uh, founder of Beat Freaks Geeks, a uh, producer showcase based here in Los Angeles, California. We want to thank everybody for being a part of the discussion. We're going to get real deep tonight, but we're also going to enjoy some very sick vibes from some amazingly talented producers. I mean, we got some vibes for y'all tonight. <laughs> now, I want to start with, you know, having everyone introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. My, my name is Killerman Zigo. I'm a producer from Philadelphia. Hi, everyone. My name is Omar. You probably know me best as More Kismet. I am a 15-year-old non-binary and pan musician and visual artist residing in the very <laughs> desert, <laughs> desert and desolate Adelanto, California. What's going on? I'm Jovan Landry from Chicago, and I am a filmmaker, photographer, MC, and a beat maker. What's up, everybody? Um, my name is Caption. Um, well, my name is Adrian, but I go by <laughs> Caption. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Let's start with, you know, one of you. You know, don't all rush to, to the stage, but let's start with somebody to uh, kick us off for the night. I um, volunteer chaos tribute. <laughs> anyway i'm blown away but like this just oh <laughs> my god the way Smash that we my... work the fucking vocal chops is just just blows my mind hold on yeah. i i missed that can you do that again rewind select <laughs> That's how, that's, how you set the tone. that's how you raise the that, that's how you set the bar right there wow <laughs> really. wow i love it as you know, we we're we're bridging that gap between the creative community and in the, the the further progress of social justice and, and raising awareness of just 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 gross racial inequalities and, and issues that our country has been plagued with for far too long. I've personally been 
looking at this rodeo go round and round since I was born. You know, mm -hmm. since born and raised, I'm born in 82 in Detroit. When I was 10 mm -hmm. years old, one of the biggest things we had, that was 92, Malice Green was, was brutally beat to death by two Detroit police officers. A year later, or no, a year before that, you had Rodney King in LA, which led to, to the riots in Los Angeles. I mean, this is a story that gets rinsed, recycled, and repeated over and over. And every time we think we've made some type of progress, we, we're, we're given that, that nightmarish reminder that we really haven't gotten far at all. Now, I'd like to hear from each and every one, each of you. I mean, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling? And how has these events affected your creative outlook and your your perception on the world creatively? It kind of gave a broader importance to everything behind the scenes that I'm doing. Because like, and, and, I'm, and I'm viewing this as kind of like two different outlooks. One, I'm viewing this as me working on these projects, working on the show and working on my music and releasing it. Um, this is sharing my story so that way if something were to happen to me unjustly, then at least people will have something to remember me by fondly and have something to take in and carry on if they'd like. But also I'm viewing it from the outlook of I'm doing this shit, I'm killing it. I don't care if this shit continues to go on and more people like me, or if I even die at the hands of unjust people like police officers, then this is what this is exactly what the fuck you're gonna be missing out on if people like me are gone. Because there is so much that black people and black queer communities have contributed to as far as music. Music would be nothing without Black influence. All music, especially dance music and electronic music, come from Black, queer communities yes. and raves. Mm -hmm. And yes. more people need to fucking realize that because at some <laughs> point, it's at some point it's gonna sink in people's heads and then they're gonna stop being dicks about it. But for right now, they're being dicks about it and trying to come at people who are actually trying to spread history about it. My question to you all is how do you feel education has failed the progress of society and hindered our progress overall in regards to racial relations within our country. Misinformation. Completely. Definitely misinformation. Yeah. People are just now finding out about a lot of this. People just, people just never knew, you know, like how do you just not know? It's because nobody's telling them, nobody's teaching them, nobody's even mm -hmm. reached out to give that information. And it's been so, you know, we've been so, um, I guess you could say brainwash, you know, mm -hmm. to the fact that our history is nothing but what we read in the history books. We need to learn more about Black history or mel well, melanated community because I've learned there's no such thing as Black because Black is just a color. It's not necessarily yeah. us as a people. Mm, um, exactly. But yeah, I think it's all all a setup, to be honest with you. You know, they didn't want Black people to read. They didn't want Black people to own our own yeah. things. With that being said, with education, you know, I would love one of y'all to educate us some more on the beats that we're going into next. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I guess I can go. I guess I can go. Go, go Javon! Go, go Javon! Okay, set the bar. <laughs> I think I'm gonna keep the bar up.
Wow. Yes. No. A singer. Yes. 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 Time to throw my computer in the yeah, trash. Love that. Love that you know what's amazing is that like Javon isn't even just a producer. Like this isn't even the only thing that she's good at. Mm, <laughs> We multiple trick ponies have some shit up our sleeves, yeah. <laughs> now I wanted to touch on this aspect of this this new age of activism that we're in, and it's the age of social media activism. And I just want to know your thoughts on how effective you feel social media is in the grand scheme of progress that we're working towards, and and what are some of the the negative aspects of of social media as it plays its part in correlation to what we're working towards. Someone like me who's um, immunocompromised and can't actually be physically in the protests, like social media is a very important tool for me and even um, other online tools like listening to police scanners and letting you know people know who are you know really out there doing direct action, you know, what's going on around them. Do you sometimes feel social media is so rapid in terms of uh, keeping attention spans that it actually, in this weird way, plays against you because in another week, something could take all of the attention mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. from what we're working towards? Well, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on that? That was a big fear. I'm sure we've all seen you know, our Twitter feeds or Instagram or anything where people are like, you know, don't forget keep this up, you know, keep it going. It's it's a really good question considering that we're all artists. And so learning how to balance your music, sharing your music and, you know, keeping up the same energy with what's going on around you and, you know, trying to decide, you know, when when is a good time to like contribute your art or, you know, feel like it has some sort of impact with the message is, you know, something that I'm sure we've all been like kind of grappling with. Yeah. It's, it's finding that balance and understanding that what we're working towards is is not a one month thing. It's not there's no finite mm -hmm. time frame on when when we will achieve what we're working towards. It's a it's a lifelong process. And even when we do get change in progress, you got to hold on to it, because at any given moment for every for every person that's working toward progress, there's a half a person working to take it away from you. Up next, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the coin. We got is a cap. Is a cap. Four more. Is a cap. I'll send it. I'll send it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yo, can y'all see this? Yep. This looks like yep. Yep. this looks crazy. I got fifty something wow. tracks on it. Wow. I really I really tried my best, you know. Well, I hope y'all like it. All right, let's see. We will. Okay. Who? Someone said that drum hit harder than an 18 wheeler <laughs> <laughs> or 16 wheeler. <laughs> can you tell us about that? But can you like also play that drop again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, most definitely, most that definitely. <laughs> So, I mean, the first thing that popped out to me was um, Bass Snacks, um, the violin sounds, the, the these sounds. So I just use those. Oh, like, shoot. Pick them up a few times. Um, and then, like, this is Kay's pluck. Um, I actually <laughs> took, I took it and I just cascaded it with a bunch of delay. Oh. Oh. There's oh, so sorry. much, so many pieces. Oh, the, the kick, that kick. 
Uh, what? That Moore's beautiful kick? kick? Moore's kick? Moore's kick is crazy. Oh nice. my <laughs> Also, uh, Jovan's like those, those, um, I loved messing with those. Those are a big yeah, part of was, like, the way my, oh, when my wow. song flows. So I, like, I should have messed with those in my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow. 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 Yeah, I like, I had a really good time enjoying wow. like, messing with those ones. So yeah, yeah, wow. I loved, I had a lot of fun with that. All right. <laughs> That's what's mm. up, man. We see you. What approach do you take to help educate those wanting to know more, may, may, maybe not seeing things eye to eye with you, but you see that curiosity they have to become more enlightened? How, how, do, you, how do you have those conversations? I grew up in the suburbs of Dallas. Um, I went to a largely majority white school um, in a very nice part, a very nice part of, uh, of you know, the Metroplex. And, you know, I gain a lot of a lot of friends that were white that are still white you know what i'm saying and i mean it's not like they could change but anyways, <laughs> uh, and i think really just coming from coming from a place where it's you're not trying to attack you know anybody especially for being curious you know if they don't know they don't know because they don't know if they're trying to understand now they're trying to be better than what they might have think they might think of somebody else or you know maybe their parents were and they've gotten that you know so I've always just seen it as just, just be kind, just be kind about, you know, your struggle. There is a place for being kind, but I think there's also a place for being very direct and very like, um, you know, bold with what you're saying. I don't have the energy all the time to like explain to a white person or a non-black POC person um, what the hell is going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, <laughs> like if you can open a book and search for something, like if I can open a book and search for something, so can you, you know? Like we, we're already going through so much as black people that we don't have, we don't always have that time and energy. You're absolutely right. I, again, uh, one, one common denominator that you'll notice that comes up is education and, and nurturing. Hate's not, you don't, you're not born hate. It's taught, right. mm -hmm. it's conditioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's passed on, right? Tying back to social media. Social media gave us eyes again. It showed you shit ain't sweet. Well, I think we're missing somebody, right? Who's Omar. been quiet? Somebody's been Omar. quiet. Omar. 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 Yeah, Omar. The president. I'm giving up after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retiring. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> square wave and then uh oh that's so nice yeah. Yeah. with like some delay and additional reverb and stuff and then this is just my the main synth which is this um it's just this original chord loop under Shaper oh. Box. Wait, wow. if I, uh, where is it coming from? Okay. So it's just Shaper Box and EQ. Wow. Shaper and Box? Have, yes. And then I have the fail safe booklet top going underneath it for additional melodic structure. So, mm -hmm. uh, Cap, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then that, uh, that has fire. like additional like EQing to make it a little bit brighter and then layered together. Wow. Yo, I love how Amazon has a different yeah, we do. But we, yeah, but we, we all do. Yeah, but we all have the same intensity and vibe. Yeah. And same. Oh, definitely. It was like these percussion samples or something. This 
and I ran this in um, I ran this in uh, a plugin called Therapy, which is a granular synthesis plugin from like 2005. Mm -hmm. um, and I ran it through that. It kind of pitched it down a little bit. And then what I did was I ran it through a compressor. The yeah. drum, like the actual drum, like the kick snare. Um, this is actually Cap's kick. Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. I did was I pitched it down uh, 600 cents. Mm, okay. And um, I turned Ooh. the filter cut off here. Mm. And then I put Couture on it, which is a transient shaper and uh -huh. EQ to give the transients back. And then these two are just Lack City snares. Mad scientists. More than wow. mad scientists. Like, I can't, there's so many things about you that I cannot get over. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I think about like what, what I was doing when I was 15. And like, right. like <laughs> I was useless at that age. <laughs> My question is to, to each of you, how, how vital do you feel the role of an artist is to activism? And what would you like to see more of, more from the artistic, uh, whether independent or mainstream art artistic community to help us achieve an end to police brutality, to achieve an end to racial inequality and in, in all of the injustices that plague our society today. What are your thoughts on that? My goal in life has always been to make myself and others happy. Mm. And I feel at most times, if I'm not doing that, if I'm not happy or if other people that I know aren't happy with what I do, then I know that I'm not doing my job correctly, that I know I'm not doing something right. I want to be that voice for people who feel voiceless. I want to be that for people because a lot of times people feel like they don't have a voice. And as a result, the more people feel like they don't have a voice or a say in things, the less voices there are to properly advocate for the truth and for change. Mm -hmm. And as a result, not a fucking thing in this world is gonna change if no one is speaking up about anything. So if I'm able to create artwork that properly expresses how most already feel, then I know I'm doing my fucking job right. Basically what Omar said. <laughs> <laughs> and then what they were saying earlier about, you know, having more representation, that goes into the people that are behind the scenes, that are the executives, that, that are the owners of these businesses. Do. Yep. Fill the blank. Hire black people. Thank you all for, for rocking with us. Shout out to all the insane beats that we've been hearing and uh, we ain't yes. done yet. We Ew. ain't done yet, baby. I mean you're like uh, you're kinda done because okay, I don't I don't wanna like I don't wanna like like shit on myself too much, uh -oh, but like uh -oh. I've I've barely had time to work on I can, I'm not gonna give excuses. It just it is yeah, what it just is. I love it already. Woo! I fucking knew it. I told y'all. <laughs> ah! 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 It's a party. Oh, she threw that stank. Yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> oh, no shot. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Like, come on. Exactly. I knew that you had no time to work on this. makes me more nervous on this planet than like playing my music for people who I like respect the shit out of <laughs> like it's really it's like one of my it's like one of the only things that makes me really nervous and I've been like sweating here the whole time <laughs> um but yeah thank you guys and um I have I have no idea what we're really up to at this point but it's looking I don't want to call anything 
but it's looking like we've raised almost seven hundred dollars wow awesome Awesome. it's for a national bailout which is a an organization that has been already on the front lines of um bailing out the people that can't afford bail because it's a fucked up system and it's super racially targeted and they're always targeting like people who can't afford bail and some absurd amount of money is spent on people who are incarcerated who are still awaiting trial most people who are in jail haven't even gone to trial exactly because they just can't afford bail so this group national bailout they've been on the front lines they've been working on this for a really long time um and now they're focusing their um they're like shifting their focus towards protesters too so it's super topical like and and I, i don't know i'm just like i've got really emotional at the beginning of the stream because of how generous everybody is in this community like thank you guys Mm -hmm. for taking the time to make music and to join the conversation and to all of these people who are in the stream and chat who are just donating left and right for this it's a beautiful thing and again shout out to all of you for just putting this together bad snacks kay thank thank you all for inviting me into the discussion i truly appreciate y'all i hope i was a good moderator i I, I tried to put on my anderson cooper hat you know what i'm saying (laughs)